Amerijet presents The Life of a Package Global shipping services is what Amerijet is all about. But how does it all begin? Who's involved? What are the challenges and how does the process work? How does a package make it to its final destination? You're about to watch a journey that takes you to four Amerijet locations to answer those questions. Plus an up close and personal view of Amerijet's vivid, exciting, family values driven culture. What you're about to watch is not actors working at Amerijet. What you're about to watch is the real deal. First stop is Houston, Texas. Humble Houston is a perfect match for Amerijet's team spirit and their vision for excellent customer service. It's a big city with a freight forwarding community that has a life of its own. Let's find out how Amerijet fits in. Amerijet Houston is a very unique uh, industry. Um, we have many different nationalities here that um, all come together. They all come to Amerijet to ship their goods anywhere from uh, personal goods, household goods that ship to the Caribbean, to Mexico, to uh, South America. Um, and then we also have um, our customers in the oil field industry that um, bring us all the large oil field equipment. We have a great partnership with the community around here because we service the logistics needs that move everything into uh, our, our service base, which is the uh, Latin America and the Caribbean. Over the last 15 years that I've been here, um, I've been able to experience the, the growth in people, the growth in customer service. We treat each other like family. We care about each other and we care about the customers. We're very close. It's a close niche station. Good morning guys. Morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Brought you guys some donuts this morning. Cool. Yeah. Happy you. Friday. Happy Friday. Mm -hmm. In Houston we maintain a high level customer service. Um, our customers are very important to us and we want them to feel that. When they email us um, for a booking or a quote um, or any urgent matter, they can feel confident that we're going to respond to them very quickly. Um, it is important for our responses to get back to them um, as they have a responsibility to get back to their customers, which makes it all happen. Our usual customers is our freight forwarding community. These are the, the forwarders that uh, bring us their oil field equipment uh, that needs to move to Port of Spain, Trinidad, Barcelona, Venezuela, or Maracaibo, Venezuela. And we normally ship for them and their customers, which involves the oil and gas um, companies. And this is could be from pipes that are uh, 40 feet long and um, some engines that might weigh 10 tons. Now that we have an understanding of where these packages are coming from, let's meet the people that have to close the deals and get the freight moving. The best way to find new customers is just by driving around. You notice signs on buildings and so forth. The best thing to do is just to get the address, the telephone number, the company name, do a little research on them, give them a call or a personal cold call visit. Good. My name is Sheila. I'm with Ameriget International. We're an airline that flies to Latin America and the Caribbean. Do you guys ship air freight? Yes, ma'am. Here's my card. Can you give me somebody else's card so I can yes. call back and make an appointment? Here you go. Hi, Greg. I'd like to thank you again for taking time for me today. You're welcome, Sheila. Um, I'm not sure how much you know about Ameriget International. We're an all-cargo airline that flies from Miami to Latin America and the Caribbean. Okay. When they're new, we just want to make sure um, that they know that we're there to help them out. What's your most important need? For us, uh, you've, you've heard this time and time again, you know, it's all about service. People want to ensure that their freight is going to get where it's supposed to get to. They want it there timely and they want it there in good shape. We have uh, tariff rates for the general public. We have contract rates for our customers, our long-term customers, and we have spot rates that we can offer as well. Uh, a, a big uh, 
concern, uh, as usual, is always about the rates. One of the challenges, I think, with customers is they're always looking for the best price and the best service, and service doesn't always come with a low price. So we have to explain our services and give them the high quality points that we at Amerijet provide that other companies don't. We have a great team here in Houston and a great team down in Miami. Um, I usually see if there's anything that's going wrong and I'll, I'll alert whoever booked it. Usually okay. I go directly to Joel and he'll you know filter it through the team. Um, I'll be happy to give all my, you know, everybody a cell card that they can call me at any time. My cell number's on there. I answer, you know, morning, noon, night, weekends. Every week on Monday morning, we try to assign all our customer visits. We'll call them up and we'll go visit them. We either talk to them about new services, updated services. Good morning, Nina. Hola, good morning. How are you? Thank you very much for seeing me today. Come in. Clover had a couple of big oversized pieces, which is that's not unusual for Houston with the oil and gas. Big pieces, oversized, that I want to go to Maracaibo or Las Piedras. The best call for you. Okay, okay, the, the dimension, let me see, the dimension are 200. She showed us the pieces and we can definitely help her out. We like to sit with them, go over what they've given us, go over their rates, just any kind of services that they might need. Well, I'm here to see you guys, see how y'all doing, see how business is, stay in your face, get to know you better. <laughs> um, how is your cargo into Maracaibo coming along? We've been a little bit slow to Maracaibo, but we're still using quite a bit of uh, airlines into there okay. and I need to verify your rates a little bit more. Okay. Remembering that they play golf, remembering that they have children or grandchildren, just uh, being on a personal level with them after several years, just keeping that relationship going is always important. Thank you for calling Amerijet. This is Nina. How can I help you? Hi, Nina. This is Peter from ESO Supplies. How are you doing today? Oh, hi, Peter. How are you? Peter's with ESO, located in Trinidad, in Port of Spain, Trinidad. He called with an urgent request. We have an urgent shipment today. It's arriving about 3 p.m. from Texas by. Could you do whatever you can to get this down to Miami? Sure, we can help you with that. Tell me what you have. I have a bunch of loose flanges and fittings. They're all in stainless steel. So I really suggest that we put it in a box. Just charge me for it, that's not a problem. But the problem is this, Nina. I need this in Trinidad in two days. Oh, sure, sure, we can do it. Hey, just send me the location and we can actually uh, set up a hot shot truck with dedicated team drivers. We can pick it up. Just send me an email, let me know the exacts, with the address, the zip code, and we will get this going. I'll send you an email right away. The import is Texas Pipe. I mean, it's the usual one that we use, but I'll make sure I send you the reference PO numbers, the shipping weights, dimensions, and everything else that you need to get this going. Okay. All right, thank you so much. We'll get it going for you, no worries. Thank you, bye-bye. Once a deal has been closed, freight gets delivered and it's time for the warehouse team to keep things moving. Raul and Michelle work closely together to get the job done. Together they coordinate the duties, everything that has to be loaded. The receiving. And maintaining the warehouse. All the information is entered into the putty system. Afterwards, Raul uses the information to act as a loadmaster and precisely load the freight with his team. Some of the challenges of shipping oil freight is that the commodities are heavy and bulky and a lot of the times they are not packaged properly. Fortunately, Amerijet is able to fix crates on site or create new ones altogether. Peter's urgent shipment is ready to go. A 
warehouse agent takes a picture and it's off to Miami. Jet in New York is very much like the world's busiest city. It's fast-paced featuring many interactions with people from all over the world. The staff has that fighting spirit that New York City is famous for. They're never afraid to get the job done but always with the heart that the entire Amerijet family embodies. Well New York is, is very diverse in the different cultures that we have here. Uh, our, our people are the same way. We actually have people from all walks of life working here both in operation and in sales. We do know this is New York. New York is on a fast speed basis daily. Our staff is equipped and is ready for that fast space every day. So at the end of the day, how we deal with our clients, uh, they can be crazy like they say in the movies, crazy New Yorkers. Everybody that comes to the station, no matter who it is, whether it's drivers or customers, everybody's in a rush. But for the most part, we live in the communities, we eat the same foods, we drink the same drinks, and we, we're, uh, you know, we understand fellow New Yorkers at the end of the day. Camaraderie in the marriage at, at uh, JFK is, is great, okay? <laughs> I mean, if somebody's not here, we all pitch in the Christmas time, you see us down in the warehouse, loading trucks, unloading trucks, doing security, uh, it, it, we do everything, okay? It works as a team, okay? And that team spirit and team uh, camaraderie is phenomenal. The atmosphere here is uh, pretty in interesting in that um, it could be weather related, it could be time uh, constraints. For example, in February, March, and April, there are a lot of uh, festivals in the Caribbean, so people want to get their goods out. Uh, during the November, December time period, January, we get uh, a lot of cold weather, a lot of snow. So really it depends on, on the situation. We also have the challenge in many cases of somebody who may only speak one language and their, their native language may be Spanish. Uh, so we do have bilingual people on staff. Buenos días. Eh, quisiera mandar un barril para mi país, El Salvador. Let us speak Spanish to us or step over here to Francisco. Okay. Yeah. Buenos días. Buenos días, ¿cómo está? Bien, bien, ¿qué le puedo ayudar? Quisiera mandar un barril para mi país, El okay. Salvador. On a daily basis, Amerijet New York can deal with hundreds of customers coming through our door and within the hour, two hours, three hours. Each one of those customers have a different story and a different reason why they are sending packages back home. From parties, to weddings, to funerals, to gifts and just packages for loved ones. Forty percent of our revenues come from the uh, ethnic community, the people that are shipping barrels and boxes home to their families. They work hard. Um, they're shipping to the Caribbean, Central America, and parts of South America. Our responsibility as Amerijet is to make sure we get that package to destination in a timely manner, in good condition. The customer puts all their faith in Amerijet. So the first thing that person does is they bring the barrel to our warehouse. Even though Amerijet New York deals with all sorts of freight, their main customers are walk-ins. It is one thing to hear about the process, but it's another thing to see Amerijet New York in action. With the first impression here, I, I learned one thing at Amerijet. It's just, uh, it's not about getting your person's package out quickly and getting them out of here, one, two, three. It's more of like treating them awesome when they come in here. I want them to be able to come in here for the first time and then come back knowing that we treat our customers respectfully. Can you help with your barrel? Yeah, just put it over right here. I'm going to pack it now. Okay, no problem. Thank you. No problem, miss. We ask them what they're shipping in the barrel. That way we know exactly what's inside. Uh, we have a few customers that try to ship uh, flammable substances like perfumes and aerosol cans so we try to see exactly what they're shipping just so it'll be safe it's a basically a safety precaution for us and them and just to understand what exactly they're shipping that way we know how to pack it inside the barrel and get as much items in that barrel as possible let's see what you have left over so we can try to fit all right this is easy we'll just make this nice and level mm -hmm. And it should all fit, okay? Okay. No problem. You're all set, miss. The barrels that we get are very, very overweight, so we try to help as many as possible. Thank you very much. No problem, miss. Okay, thank you. Immediately, we get the, the weight off our scale. Where's this barrel going to, miss? Trinidad. You have 98 kilos in this barrel. As soon as we get the weight on the barrel, we then process it onto a warehouse receipt. Once we do that, 
The warehouse receipt then gets transferred into our computer system. That person then has to come and fill out the shipper's letter of instruction, which is a three-page report. And this form's located inside the office. Okay. You have to fill out all three, okay? Take yeah. your time with it. We have samples also located outside if you need help. You're gonna take this form. Okay. And the SLI, fill it out, take your time, and then they'll help you inside in the okay, office. no problem, thank you. The shipper's letter of instructions basically would give us the information like the shipper's address, his telephone number. The same is for the consignee the person is going to. There's an ID check. They give us the value of the merchandise they're shipping and they tell us how they're paying for it. You can pay at the destination or you can pay in New York. The first copy is called the agent's copy. This goes for the agent, whoever is receiving the freight on the other side, the destination. This is an extra copy that we would use for our files here at JFK. This is for the consignee at destination, whoever picks up the items. This is for their accounting part of it. And these are extra copies for like US customs and customs at destination. Mary Ann, I need the phone number for the person receiving the trailer. Uh, 868-255-5553. Are you paying here? Yes. I need the value. What is inside of the barrel? 2100. Buy by the next 150. Charger, please. All set. When is going to be there? By Wednesday. By Wednesday? Yes. No, no, no. I need it for Monday flight. The cut off is at 11 a.m. And you came after the cut off time. It's only 1205. I was here early. I was packing the barrel and everything. And I explained to her the court office at 11 a.m. And the only way that she can get the, the package to be there at POS on Monday is using the GCS service. If you want, we can offer the GCS service. Uh-huh. That's the express guarantee service. Mm-hmm. And it's going to be there by Monday. But it's going to be more expensive. Okay, how much? Hold on a second. It's going to be $300. That's okay. fine. Yeah, because I need that for Monday. I need you carrying it. This is your coffee. Okay, now it's for Monday, right? You yeah. change it? Okay. They're gonna call the consignee for an arrival. Okay, thank you so much. You're welcome. They have to, they have to wait for to be called, or they can go to the airport on Monday? If you want, I can give you the phone number for the station too. Okay, please. Let me write it down. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, bye-bye. Mary Ann's barrel has been carefully placed on a truck and it is now on its way to the Miami hub, where it has a plane to catch for Port of Spain, Trinidad. Now that both packages are headed to the Miami hub, our corporate controller Todd Vico in Fort Lauderdale would break down a very important part of the process, accounts receivable. Now that we've received the customer's cargo as well as payment, we have to account for the cash. And up here I have an example of what we call the back office. Every day our stations create a revenue report to show the daily activity of cargo collected as well as payments. On this revenue report is a listing of all the airway bills as well as how it was paid by either cash, check, or credit card. In this example, we're gonna have a revenue report that's $2,500 for the day. They also create a deposit slip for $2,500 with all the cash and checks. That's picked up by Brinks every single day and delivered to the bank. The revenue report along with the deposit slip is then emailed to accounts receivable. One of our posting agents receives the email and posts this cash against the station's accounts receivable aging. Again, $2,500 revenue report, $2,500 posted against the aging. The next morning, one of our accountants prints out the activity from the online banking system as well as the general ledger account. This is so that they can perform the bank reconciliation, which is critical so that we can account for and reconcile our cash that we receive every day. What the staff account will see is a posting from accounts receivable for $2,500, 
They'll also see a deposit on the online banking system for $2,500. As far as they're concerned, we're reconciled, the revenue is accounted for, and the money is accounted for, and we have it in the bank. Marriage at Miami is a very busy gateway that never sleeps, with a staff that never sweats at a challenge. The Miami Hub is the final stop before our packages board a plane to Port of Spain. Painting a picture from Miami and the atmosphere, the environment, to me it's all about passion. It's always moving. It's Cuban coffee all the time, and when everyone is just relaxing at home, the Miami Hub is going at 100%. Merijet's family is passionate, passionate to service each other, passionate to service our customers, and that to me that shows each and every day. All shipments exporting in the United States come in through the Miami Hub. They're exported from all of our domestic stations via road feeder, line haul, and they arrive here in Miami. We receive all of our domestic freight in our receiving area. The regular procedure when a truck pulls an ore dock is we gotta ensure that the, dra that the driver secures the truck before you go inside the truck by putting the shocks and the air brakes. Then you will proceed to check the paperwork, proper destination, peace count, what kind of phase, the hazmat, parachute, general cargo, um, RKNs, all of that we need to be taken into consideration while you're receiving freight. Then you start uploading, waiting the cargo, taking dims, putting all the information into the system, and then labeling the cargo until you end staging the cargo on the correct destination. The first thing we do is when we come in, we look at the board where we have the flight schedule. And according to our flight schedule, our flight coordinator will print out our inventory. Morning when we come in, we log into our system, we check our emails, and we print our flight schedule. And from based on that flight schedule, we see what, how many flights do we have, the destination we are flying to, what type of aircraft, and then we start printing inventories. What's important about my position is have to be in, well informed, not only what's going on here at Miami, but also on different stations, special requirements from different stations, different departments. So I have to be in touch with all the departments uh, after completion of the flight and before completion of the flight. Once the inventory is printed out, we give it to uh, the lead, the warehouse lead, or the warehouse supervisor, and they start working on those destinations. We then scan and stage each piece in its destination. After we build the pallet, we tie it down, we send it to the scale. The scale is almost basically is our final procedure. The scale gives us the final weight on the pallet, which in this case is 50-10. And from there, it, we put it down on the computer, write it down on the paper, we tag it up, and we send it on the weight. We take off from here, after loading, we proceed to the gate at our Mary Jet in the hub. And then we stop at the gate, the, the guard, check everything, and then they put the, uh, close the door, we put close the door and then they put the seal on and register the numbers and then call the airport and give all the information, the truck numbers, the trailer numbers, the driver's name, 
all the other the seal numbers and we, we proceed through the uh, first gate at the airport then uh, the, the guard at the airport check the truck also and they got the drivers check all the security the seal numbers and everything if it's correct if it's accurate she cut off the seal and then register that and so we proceed to open the door and park the truck That's when then uh, somebody else come in and unload the cargo and then put it in proper place for the airplane until they're ready to load. The uh, ramp force offloads the trailer and stages the pallets uh, to the aircrafts that uh, it is destined to depart on. Pallet tags have a destination on them which are then matched with load instructions and are then loaded by our ramp staff and load masters uh, on the appropriate aircraft. Daily uh, procedure is to uh, first of all check our schedule and the weather for the destinations. Also we cross-reference the information that our dispatchers have given us in the form of a release against what we know our uh, time and route usually runs and our fuel burn usually runs. Also, we check our, our weights for the most efficient altitude and the most efficient runway to use for departure. With the cargo, we're depending upon our load masters to load the aircraft properly. The load masters check with their bosses in load control to make sure that all the paperwork and the loading coincides. The load master then reports to the captain the, uh, how the aircraft is loaded shows evidence with a computer-generated flight plan that the aircraft is loaded safely. We ascertain as a team that this is loaded properly and safely so we won't have any problems during flight. Various forms of calibrating and testing are done before the plane takes off. And the process doesn't end once the plane is in the air. Every time the plane lands, information has to be logged and signed off on. And we were airborne at 8.16. For three hours and seven minutes. Yeah, one, four, five, man, okay. As soon as the plane is parked, our VIP packages will be in the hands of our Emeritus family in Port of Spain. We have arrived at our final destination, Port of Spain, Trinidad. The island of Trinidad is festive and beautiful. The people of Port of Spain are family oriented, but their big business is oil. The Amerijet Trinidad family loves to deliver on time. They work hard, but their grace makes it look so easy. First and foremost, Polo, it's a big company. It's more of a family. We like to be known as the Amerijet family. And that fits in perfectly with the culture that we have here in Port of Spain. Because most, uh, most and foremost in this, in this small island like this, everyone is literally family. You may not be blood related, but we consider everybody family. So that fits in or it blends in perfectly with the Amerijet culture. We are one big family and we do whatever it takes to keep the family happy. After arrival of the aircraft, all the cargo is offloaded and it's staged in an area north of the warehouse, just outside our main gates. The pallets, the airline pallets that is, they come into the warehouse area one at a time. It's opened and the cargo, each individual piece is tallied. 
they, they, they are then staged into the warehouse and put in the various locations um, on separation. Should it be oil field equipment or personal effects, they each have their own areas where they are staged in the warehouse. Mary Ann's friend in POS has arrived to pick up the barrel. First of all, when the customer arrives here, they must go to our customer solutions department and collect the necessary documentation. There they will collect whatever documentation they need to collect. When the barrel arrives, documentation is accompanied by the barrel. We therefore process the documentation. We call the customers. Uh, when they come to the counter, they pay their, their charges. Hi, good morning. I'm here to collect a barrel. All right, we're charging at 246.51. We process the documents again, and therefore they take it down to the customs department, where the documents are lodged with customs, and the cargo is brought forward and examined by the customs department. Customs will check the documentation and then hand it over to our warehouse staff, who in turn will go locate the cargo and bring it forward for inspection in the inspection area. Customs will then do their inspections, ensure paperwork is complete, payments are made, if duties has to be paid, the duties will be paid, sometimes the duties are prepaid. Once everything, all the I's are dotted and the T's are crossed, they will now get delivery and they can proceed to take ownership of their shipments. Another satisfied customer. Our time with Mary Ann's barrel has come to an end. Let's see how Peter's oil freight shipment is coming along. Peter called us this morning in connection with his shipment that is arriving today. He called even before we could have called him because of the urgency of the shipment. We confirmed to him that the shipment is arriving. He has put all his things in place. He has arranged for his brokers to be on spot for when that car will get here so that they can clear on arrival. Once the documents come downstairs from Customer Solutions, the cargo is pulled from its location and it is brought forward for examination. The documents are then taken to the security point, where the documents are verified by security and the broker. When the documents are verified, the cargo is loaded for delivery. Business as usual, Peter's urgent shipment has arrived on time. Our journey has come to an end. But before we wrap things up, Peter wanted to make sure we share his thoughts on the Amerijet experience. Our relationship with Amerijet has been around since 2001. I cannot find the right words to describe how incredible the crew of Michelle, Angie, David and all those guys in Houston have done to our company. There's actually a section at Amerijet for e-service supplies. We actually import materials every Tuesday, Wednesday and Friday out of, out of Houston. It's really incredible of the volume of business that we do on a day-to-day -day basis. And they, they range from anywhere from a 20 pound package to 6,000 pounds and in a few circumstances I've actually had to hire your plane to bring an entire product down to Trinidad. In all these years, I must tell you that the only reason why we have continued to grow is because of Ameriga and because of the synergistic alliance that we've had with this company. We can and always do deliver on time, and most important is to exceed our customers' expectations. Hence the reason why I think Ameriga at Adiso is a phenomenal marriage. Many words come to mind when considering Ameriga's culture, but two words jump out at me. Authenticity and enthusiasm. Authenticity manifests itself each day with a genuine desire of all Amerijetters to serve our demanding customers. Over the years, we've set a high standard of service, which our customers have come to expect, and we live up to those expectations each and every day, in everything we do. And here's the best part. We do this enthusiastically. It's not a manufactured or forced emotion. No, 
our customers would see right through that. It stems from the genuine desire to serve, to get the job done, without exception. These two words, authenticity and enthusiasm, are ingrained in Amerijet's culture. They are at home in Amerijet.